Usually there's like a little <coughs> sound bar on the side that pops up. Okay, we are a little bit late, so let's start by assuming the posture of Tai Chi Harmony. So allow your feet to connect, <coughs> bring your head top up to its highest point, relax your shoulders, relax your hips, gently bring the base of your palms together first, then let your fingertips rest, and then let your arms relax, let the inside of your forearm and your elbow expand, and let the inside of your armpit open, and feel as though the shoulders are in the right place, and the chest not puffing forward, but is relaxed. Connect the tongue to the upper palate, and activate the corners of the mouth. Relax the brow, grip the toes, <clears throat> pull your heels so that they feel powerful. Relax your jaw. Do we already connect the tongue to the upper palate? Make sure that's connected. Breathing, lift the base of the torso. Are you using your core to support? So we want to have the center is strong. Allow your tailbone to unfold. Imagine your tailbone sinking towards your heels. Conversely, push the back of your head top up. And then keep all of those same, keep all of that same structure, keep all of the same shape and relax. So find the places in your body that feel tense to hold this posture and allow them to relax. And I want you to imagine that you have two different bodies sitting right on top of each other. You have a physical body that has bone and it has tendon, and muscle, and there's blood. And then you have an energetic body, you have an energy body sitting in the exact same space. You have your chi. You can think of it as a ghost shape of yourself. It's the same shape as you, your energy. And so I want you to take your physical body offline and allow the energy body to support easiest to start with the head. So relax the skin, even without moving. I move my hands to show you where. <laughs> relax the skin on the top of your head. And then relax your brow. And then leave your head top up there and take the tension out of your neck like it's melting. One teacher described it as like candle wax, or would say you may feel like there's like honey dripping. <clears throat> so allow the tension to melt and move in a fluid capacity. So as you turn your physical body offline, Bring the energetic body online and imagine replacing the parts where you feel tension when you can allow that to relax. Imagine your chi body taking over in that spot. And that allows for further relaxation. So as you find one spot relaxes, so does another. But we don't want to melt like a candle. This is what happens when you work in front of the computer all day and you do a time lapse, the body starts to melt. So when we're standing, if we use a candle, make it perfectly straight. And then when you feel the melting process, that's a stress leaving.
<clears throat> make a readjustment, pull the head top back up, and then let everything melt again. Let everything relax. Take your physical body offline. And then, if you feel that, expand your energy body so you can expand your physical body without any tension. Another way to describe it, keep standing in Tai Chi Harmony, focus on your breathing. Another way to describe it is you feel the outside of your, your surface and it's like a balloon. And when we have tension in places in our, in our back, in our body where there's injuries, like the surface of a balloon that hasn't been expanded in some time, there's some patches on that surface and they need to expand. So by relaxing your physical body, you expand the energy body. Check the expression on your face. When you change that, does it make you want to raise your neck? If you have a better expression on your face, does it make you want to change your posture? And the same thing with the tongue connected to the upper palate. The more relaxed it is, the more the energy flows. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? If more energy is flowing, it's relaxed. But if, <clears throat> if it's relaxed, more energy is flowing. Take a deep breath, relax. Let's do some breathing, some qigong. Take a comfortable stance. You can sink if you like. Breathing, make this also a stretch. So reach all the way up. Full inhale, inflate the lungs entirely. Reach all the way out to the sides, all the way down. Breathing deep. Go at your own pace. Stretch as much as you can. Reach out to the sides, relax your shoulders. <clears throat> and so now, with this exercise, I want to think about the same thing. Think of the body in a different way while you stretch, while you breathe. Forget about your lungs. Forget about your physical body. And imagine something different. Imagine that when you breathe, you can inflate every part of your physical body. So that as if your lungs extend all the way out to your pinkies. <clears throat> Check to see that you haven't changed to a very serious expression while trying to concentrate. Remember, with the Tai Chi breathing, we're never doing a full exhale. I don't want you to exhaust all of the breath. If we look at the yin-yang symbol for the breathing pattern, and we see the empty side still has a dot in it, it means we don't ever <clears throat> collapse the lungs. And the same thing on the fullness side, when you breathe, if you get the kind of breathing that's topping up your lungs and is segmented at the top when you breathe, that's the dot in the Taiji for the full side where there's emptiness. 
So we can fill the lungs entirely, but those little bubbles, those little air pockets, as the diaphragm spasms on filling, that's the dot inside. So we never reach the full extreme. We're always working right on the edge, right on the 99th point nine percentile. We know where the edge is and we don't go over. Grip the ground, breathe deep. <clears throat> And when you finish, go back to Tai Chi Harmony. And now do the same exercise we did earlier. Pull your head top up, connect yourself to the ground, and leave everything between those two points, the head top and the feet, relaxed. And then practice. Did you have any effect earlier when I said, Take your physical body offline and allow the chi body to fill that area. So this allows you to keep the structure while relaxed, like a balloon inflated. The air inside keeps the pressure. The outside of the balloon, while it looks like it has tension, is relaxed, it's not doing anything. Take another deep breath, <clears throat> relax. Uh, let's do a little bit of stretching. So take, while we're standing, this ne these next few exercises, the center line, very important. So take your right hand or left hand, doesn't matter, reach across, grab the ear on the other side, and then reach out your hand, pull your shoulder and your elbow back. So you wanna make everything in line, so if I'm pointing to the camera this way, pull your elbow back, and then push, the, the real stretch here is pushing your head top up, focusing on the breathing, relax, come back to the center, try the other side, reach across. Remember the long breathing, stretch your fingers out. Come back to the center. <clears throat> we'll do at least one more on the other side. So push the head top up. You can sort of twist the whole center line. Line up your elbows, shoulders, and fingers. Using your eyes to look. Reach all the way through like you're trying to extend your reach through your own hand, like you're reaching through a glove and then come back to the center, relax, take a deep breath, change, try the other side. Pull the back of the head top up, pull your elbow back, reach in both directions. Breathe deep, come back to the center, relax. <clears throat> Next, uh, bring your hands all the way up, we're gonna turn them so that they're pointing back to back. So when you come up, turn back to back. And then just let them relax. And if you can, turn so the back of your hand is hitting the outside of the leg. But you can also just allow the palms to hit either way. So breathing, bring the hands back to back, down. So coming up the center, here remember talking about the point on the side of the leg here. So sometimes when we do shoulder rolls we talk about taking the fingers and touching the sides and this point here right on the outside of the leg if you have a, a pair of pants and they have a seam that runs right on the outside that's basically on the on, on the thigh where the gallbladder meridian runs and about just about halfway down it's it's geometrically where your middle finger, when your shoulders are relaxed and your posture is right, touches at that midpoint on the leg, 
about halfway down and about halfway in. You can look it up, it's uh, gallbladder 23, 24, somewhere in there. It's a relaxation point, it's right where your fingers touch. So you can take your fingers and massage, but that requires effort. You have to put power in your tendons to, to, to do that massage. Whereas here, we're already practicing Qigong. So we should be breathing, using the energy body to inflate so that we don't have to use tension in the physical body. And then we use gravity to do the work, right? We get, this is uh, hitting, tapping, is a type of, uh, in Chinese medicine, type of stimulating. So we do exercises. The same thing, the legs, very strong, very powerful, right? We don't want to just tap the powerful leg with our fingers, there's no, no purpose. But because it's bigger, we can, we can uh, use more force. So breathing, expand, this is stretch. You can do it entirely with your breath and your energy. And then gravity. So we're using minimal effort, minimal wear and tear on the body. And producing more energy than we use because we're consciously focusing on inflating, making the lungs expand all the way out to the fingertips, making the lungs expand all the way down to the toes. This is what the masters mean when they say, the lungs are not the lungs, the body is the lung. Relax your shoulders, and your shoulders may feel like they're raising up. So allow all of this to expand and stretch your whole upper torso, and then reaching out to the side. Make sure that it just doesn't collapse. So keep your spine upright. Go at your own pace, breathing. Stretch your back. <clears throat> Two things you can do with your while you're doing this. You can Keep your hands in the vision, and the eyes follow the hands, the hands stay in the vision. So you can follow, or keeping your head straight, it's not as good, but the point is uh, that we keep the up force happening in the back of the head top, and we keep the shoulders relaxed. Let's, let's, uh, let's move on. <clears throat> uh, Take your feet, make them shoulder width wide, and we're gonna turn some hip circles. So grip the ground, and for this exercise, I want you to focus on stretching both, uh, both legs, and the main focus, the upper leg, where these tendons and muscles come off of the, the pelvis, where the hips connect to the legs. And to do this, keep the back of your head top up. So it's as if you'll have two parts like this, your lower body and your upper body, and you want to keep the upper body part of it straight. So while you turn, again, grip your toes, push your head top up there, change directions. And by the way, this is your stretch, so if you feel there's areas, uh, don't push the hip too far out to the side know the difference between a stretch and pain. <clears throat> and then while you're doing this, while you're opening the big joints, lower back should also, uh, we want to have it in the correct position. So don't be wobbling or altering it. Keep it straight. You can practice slower if you need to. And try the same thing we did earlier. Take the physical body offline, go back to the super deep breathing, and let the energy body replace the structure. Did you change directions already? Because if you haven't, we're moving on to the next one. Grip the ground, push your tailbone back and away. The same thing, let gravity do the work. Relax your head and neck. Relax all of your vertebrae, relax your shoulders. Keep breathing, 
grip the ground and see if you can feel the energy moving in your back along your spine is it up the back or is it moving downwards with gravity either way gripping when you're ready we're going to inflate lock yourself to the ground use your core relax your spine expanding the same thing breathing inflating all the way to stretch and relax we'll do one more of those so grip the ground push your tailbone back and away let everything expand and relax remember to breathe even when you're upside down And do the same thing you were doing earlier. Take your physical body offline. Put your mind through your body and see where you can relax even more. And you'll find the shape, like the outer perimeter of that balloon, uh, has tension. So take some time to relax that. When you're ready, grip your toes. Sink your tailbone as you rise up. Allow your whole torso to expand with the breathing vertically, horizontally, in all directions. Reach all the way. Relax. <clears throat> Leg stretching. Uh, let's just do this one to start. So if you don't know, grip the ground with one foot. Push the tailbone back. You can use this leg for support. You can use a wall or a piece of furniture. Reaching forward. Same thing. Keep your spine straight. Breathing deep. Now here's the real challenge. Going back to that state of relaxation, even when you're all bent out of shape. Can you relax your brow while you're here? And then check, can you actually smile as well? And then if you can do that, push forward. Take a deep breath when you stand up. <clears throat> Let's do the other side. So grip the ground. Push your tailbone back. Make sure that you're you have the right balance. Stretch your spine and either push your chin towards your fingertips or your head top either way. Pull your toes back. Allow your leg to truly stretch and then while you're breathing see if you can actually relax and find the areas that you need to relax. Grip the ground, breathing deep, push forward. And if you're not already smiling, have at least a half smile <clears throat> as a minimum. You know, let's do one more of those on each side. By the way, these exercises, this warm up, uh, I spend a lot of time working on it each week. And you see, different, different times I do different exercises. But this is stuff you can practice every day. Uh, when you go to the, <clears throat> when you ha if you have to work, if you have to drive, you have to go somewhere. When you're standing, you can be practicing relaxation. No one from the outside can see. Uh, if you have to sit for a long time, working on the keyboard, uh, driving, sitting in an airplane seat, right? This kind of thing. <clears throat> Get up every hour, every 20 minutes, anytime you feel like it. And do the stretch. Breathe. Relax. See if you can change your mind, your body, your breathing your focus, where your vision is. <clears throat> Let's do uh, some Tai Chi. We're gonna, I want to carry this idea of relaxing and allowing the Chi to carry the body into the Tai Chi form. So let's go back to standing. By the way, also standing is another practice that, that I hope that you uh, take up at home on your own as a meditation practice is standing. You don't have to use Tai Chi Harmony, although it is a good one. You can use this one. Some teachers teaching just with the arms at the side. Some teachers teaching this one, right? Stand, uh, circle standing like you're holding a tree or a large pillar. <clears throat> Lots of ways to stand. Right? But standing practice, even five minutes a day, is good. So, going back to Tai Chi Harmony, let's, uh, let's practice, grip the ground, practice your Chi. We're 
we're lifting the base of the torso while we're breathing. Just like a Tai Chi, we lift and then relax. Part of what makes Tai Chi internal martial art, part of what makes the internal martial arts are things that you cannot see what the teacher is doing. You can't see inside of my shoe. You can't see how I grip my foot or how I shape my, my, the arch. So you have to discover it. I can tell you about it. In true internal martial art, nobody's telling anybody. Breathing deep, the same thing. You can't see what I'm, what, what I'm doing internally, lifting the pelvic floor. I refer to it as the, the J shape, going from the, the coccyx, the tailbone, right? You can wiggle your tailbone as vestigial, but there's, are there connections to it? One teacher would say, try to move, practice moving your tailbone. Easy to go forwards and backwards. Can you wag it side to side? Strange concept. From the tailbone going down, the anus, if you study anatomically, it has four sides, top, bottom, left and right, there's, and there's more connections as well. But we don't want to grip that so firm, but we want to practice changing from relaxation to tension. Underneath that, the base, the perineum on the outside, and coming up through underneath the sex organs, and then we have the lower abdominal wall. Keep practicing your breathing. We have the lower abdominal wall and we have the upper abdominal section. So all of these, we want to be working together in conjunction. It, sh it forms almost like the shape of a letter J, right, going from my tailbone up to here. <clears throat> and you can think of closing and opening because we don't want to get into like flexing. Right, Hercules, too much power because this can, uh, this, this closing the abdominal wall and applying pressure back here can create problems all around. So we don't want to have, we don't want to have those problems. But, but internally, internal martial arts, you can't see what I'm doing. So I have to try to describe it to you. But you should be practicing on your own so that you understand your own body and how much is too much and how much is not enough and then find the limit and reach it without exceeding. And then also connecting the tongue to the roof of the mouth. You can't see. Where do I put it? Where do you put it? Just behind the teeth? All the way to the back? There's a right placement. Many books on yoga teaching about this. And then other breathing, what we talked about, internal martial arts. Is there a breathing pattern? Lifting and contracting the J shape on the inhale and then allowing it to relax on the exhale. What about the reverse? Once again, many books, I recommend books on my videos of who to, people have written books that uh, are beyond what I could teach. And so if you have that kind of interest, you can focus in on it. My hope is that you have a, a daily practice and that you can take what you're working on here into your other martial arts, into your other work, into your day to day. Let's practice some Tai Chi. So right from where you're at, I have to move, but from where you are, let's make sure I'm on camera. <clears throat> Opening to the side, sinking to the ground, allow your energy to do the work, take your physical body offline. Keep the head top up there. The breathing supports your idea. The breathing supports your energy. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Ward off. Breathing deep. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Find the relaxation in the structure. Roll back. 
Let it be easy. Press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Schwang on. Double press. Horizontal. Split hands. Hook. Single whip. Turn your square to the north. Split square step brush. Turn the palms, roll up. Roll down. Turn your square west. Crane opens its wings. So we keep ha. Press. Square step back into the square corner. Crane opens the wings. Number two. Play the harp. Press to the center. C step. Press. Brush knee. C step. Press. While we're doing this, can you relax? It doesn't matter if you don't know the form. Punch. Corner. Open. Focus power. <clears throat> Ban Lan Shui. Ban. Waist turn, elbow power, everything else relaxed. Focus to the center. Corner. Parry. Punch, breathing deep, stay round, inflated. Ru Feng, Si Bi. Turning, return tiger to mountain. Wow, punch right, punch left. Bring everything back to the center. <clears throat> okay, how do you feel? Anyone have, does anyone have a benefit? You feel like uh, there's a feeling that we should have that our physical body is actually riding on top of our energy body. You should, if you tune into your physical body, will feel heavy. Let's uh, practice the first section just up to hook and single whip. So I know there's people uh, watching on the YouTube that don't take the, the live class. Uh, you're welcome to join these classes. We can, uh, if you write, email, call, text, I can get you connected. But for the people, there's many people looking to learn the form without taking this class. Uh, there's too many questions about do they have to have a camera or their audio, something like this. Not required. Uh, so, I do intend to start teaching a class on individual postures for the form. Uh, we'll get to that in the future. It's, uh, it's coming. <clears throat> but in the meantime, this next section, we're going to practice the Tai Chi form. Just the first, it's the first eight postures. There's about 12 postures in there. Uh, so, because some repeat, look left, glance right, something like this grasp the sparrow's tail and ward off repeat both twice. So uh, even if you don't know the form at all, part of the process when we talk about standing in Tai Chi harmony and learning to relax the body is also how to relax the mind. And so relaxing the mind allows 
we had spoken a few weeks ago about creativity. If your mind is relaxed, it can become spontaneous. And spontaneity is a factor in creativity, right? We have to be able to have something new, original, some type of twist to the idea that's there. And if the mind is rigid, nothing new can come out of it. Only the, the rigid line, the, the right angle, right? It's very, uh, very static. So relaxing the mind, part of relaxing the mind is being able to try something, like Tai Chi form. I know some people when they practice, when we practice the form, they go to sit and they watch and say, wow, I wish I can do that. It's too confusing for me. <clears throat> this is part of Kung Fu, right? Kung Fu uh, being words in, in uh, Mandarin language, Confucius, confusion, right? This is a, this is a, before, before enlightenment, we have confusion. So the same thing, before you learn the form, everybody, nobody knew the form before they knew it. Let's try to practice. Just the first, up to hook and whip. For experienced people, I want you to practice your chi. For inexperienced people, I want you to just try to do what you think you're supposed to be doing for the form. Like when you know a song, you hear a song, or when you're a kid and you're supposed to know a song, and so you kind of, la, 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 for the parts you don't know, the lyrics you don't remember. The same when learning the Tai Chi form. There's something happening over here with this hand. I don't know what it is. Just fake it. Because as you practice, then later you're going to see, oh, there's a sharp movement there, or there can be a sharp movement there, or a very clear circle on this side, but I couldn't see because the camera. Later it will become clear. So just try to practice what you can. <clears throat> Experienced people, practice your chi. Beginners, just try to practice. The head tops up, relax your tailbone. Starting from Tai Chi Harmony, connect the tongue to the right place. Unclench your jaw. <clears throat> lifting the base of the torso, connecting that feeling of lifting the inside here with the arch of your foot. So the energy is running up the inside of the leg, all the way up to the center, to the top, out the top. Breathing deep, open to the side, sink your tailbone. Commencement, see all the way to the horizon. Relax your elbows and wrists. Breathing deep, stay expanded. Feel the weight of your body riding on the chi. Allow that weight to rest on the earth. Let the earth carry that weight. Your chi just animating the body. Press. Keep your spine upright. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal. Split. feet together, bring your hands together, take a deep breath. <clears throat> I said something a minute ago, and I want to uh, retouch on that, and that is, uh, why can't it be easy? This is, uh, I'm not trying to have some kind of magical yogic thinking, some type of mantra or mudra to say it's everything is uh, but it's more of why can't it be easy it's just a very simple question where is the, where does the tension come from where does the resistance in in uh, tai chi in the tai chi classics there's reference to water 
going to its own level, reaching its own level. So if you have a container and it has objects in it and you pour the water, the water will go and, and fill the container to its, to its level. And so be like water, right? This is a statement from, very popularized by Bruce Lee, but coming from martial artists, be like water. And, and where does water go? Where there's no resistance. So the same thing with the chi, the same thing with our, our mind. When we have resistance in our mind, I'll never learn that. When I was a kid, when somebody first showed me how to tie my shoe, I remember looking at that, and I remember thinking very clearly, I'm never gonna learn that. <laughs> I was a little kid, right? And so this is the same thing. You can, you can learn it. <clears throat> and so we're gonna have classes that expand on that in the future, but for now, just try to practice something. Same thing with, for the expert. It says, my body is too old. It has too many injuries. It's not possible. Uh, one, of, one of my, the authors that I study that's, that's uh, teaching something very valuable says, even, even somebody with, with uh, eight decades can, can uh, rejuvenate their body, right, in a certain way. And we can look to our teachers, Wong Sihai, Master Suzifong, right, these teachers, they're older, sorry, this is, in, in American culture, maybe it's disrespectful, in Chinese culture, it's a, they say Lao Tzu means old teacher, so it's a good thing. Uh, so, even for the expert in the master's mind, why can't it be easy? Let's practice some Tai Chi. <clears throat> Allow your feet to touch, bring your hands together, open to the side, commencement, Take a deep breath. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Ward off. Breathe deep. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Ward off. Feel your weight on the earth. And then allow that whole weight to relax to the earth. What keeps you up? It's your energy. Put it in the right place. Bring your feet together. Return to Tai Chi Harmony. And then check again. Deep breath. Before we continue, anyone have thoughts, questions, comments? I have been. Brian, what are you doing with your hands right before you return to hook and whip? I'm sorry, can you repeat the first part of that again? Yeah, um, when, when you're turning to do hook, hook and single whip, right before then, how are you moving your hands to get into that posture? Okay, good question, let's look at it. So, uh, this is, we have horizontal split hands, right? So horizontal split hands is, uh, at the most basic, a joint lock. We have the opponent's arm, and it's there, and it's coming towards us, and as it comes, it comes into us, we can just turn. This is horizontal splitting hands, right? It's just, if there's a, 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 a stick or a branch or an arm that's here, and I put one hand here and the other one here and do this, right? If the other guy's here, it's gonna make them go over. This is actually one, one way, uh, when you watch these fantastic martial arts movies, and they, looks like they're throwing a man over their shoulder, right, with their arm. Uh, th this, if you do this one correctly, the person will try to not, 
they're, they're, your brain has a piece of wiring in it that doesn't want the limbs to become broken. And so to prevent the elbow from snapping backwards, your body will try to follow that power. And so your opponent will give you, you know that that's a weak spot. So when you attack it, when they start to lend you their power going in this direction, if you turn your waist, it's just like throwing a, a sack of wheat, right? A sack of flour onto the ground because their power is already moving there. You can just steer the direction it goes. All right, so horizontal split hands coming. Um, there's a rock step. So uh, after my double press, I shift back, changing hands. And then when I turn here, when I turn this foot, these hands here, they're almost already in hook. But I'm using the Tai Chi symbol like drawing a little figure eight. Like when you do calligraphy, you always want to connect one straight line or one long curve to another one. So these lines turning, and then this hand, after I've thrown my opponent, if I finish this movement, if we want to put end tags on it, right, flip it to here. Now this hand swoops into the hook, right? I'll do it from another angle. Here. Power is coming this way. I shift back and turn, and then bring it back to hook. And what's the purpose of this? Is it because we want to look fancy? Tai Chi is we want to be the most efficient and effective that we can be. The purpose of this is practicing at this speed. This is for advanced practitioners, especially uh, other martial artists practicing other martial arts. The, these hand movements become important later because the speed at which we move will need to, we need to account for aerodynamics. The same way hydrodynamics, a torpedo cuts through the water and there's resistance from the water, once these moves start happening fast, the hand can actually have an impedance from the air. And so we want to make sure that the, the hand's moving almost like a wing for a bird so that there's no resistance to be fast, right? Because the relaxation allows things to happen very quickly. So let's do that again. From another angle, if power is coming this way, horizontal split hands, catch, turn, and then from here, like a, like a whip or like a whiplash, like a recoil. So split. And I'm, I want to either block or catch something here. So it's going to come back around, just like the Tai Chi shape. Like a yin yang it has a smooth, paisley has the same kind of shape. Paisley is not always in a circle. So in a real life, by the way, when you practice, you should have a perfect yin yang in your mind. Each time the elbows making the half circles, the waist turn, turning 180 degrees like a Tai Chi yin yang turning. You should make perfect ones when you practice. But in real life, things never perfect. So when you practice your handwriting, right? Uh, when, when TC uh, was alive, he showed me Chinese, he taught me Chinese calligraphy. And when you practice, you practice a lot. I, ha I used to have, I have maybe have pictures, evidence, stacks of newsprint of just characters over and over and over, thousands, thousands of times, right? Making the same character. So this is the same. Uh, when you make it, this is what Tai Chi masters, what, they can make perfect circle, right? But in real life, when, when I go to write, it's too fast and I can't make it perfect. The same thing, your opponent is coming at you, they're not delivering perfect punch, they're doing something weird. And so our circles may not be perfect, just like when you write your handwriting quickly. <clears throat> uh, I think it's time. It's, uh, does, that, does that answer your question about what's happening before the movement? Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah. So horizontal split hands. And once that horizontal split hands finishes, because I'm so close, I put a, a whip to make this circle here and then continue for this next one to do the, to do the movement. Right. <clears throat> and so, by the way, this is the same thing. Uh, we said Tai Chi is efficient. If your Tai Chi, if your yin yang from your elbows is perfect, right? We can't have this posture, right? We can't be too far stretched out. That's for performance. That's 
reaching the extreme. So until you know how to take care of your body correctly, you can practice very upright, almost with the feet just inside the shoulder width wide. It doesn't have to be uh, very extreme for uh, people watching at home. So uh, let's actually just do some cheekbone to close. Anyone have questions, thoughts, comments, ideas? Alright, cool. Let's uh, <clears throat> take a nice comfortable stance. And again, just like we did in the beginning, if there's something to take away from this class is that you can allow your physical body to relax and allow the energetic body to carry it and take that into not only when you're standing, but into your movements as well, into your everyday life. If you have to push the shopping cart, <clears throat> you can practice Tai Chi. If you have someone else do your shopping and they push the cart and you have to unload the groceries, you can practice Tai Chi while you're unloading. If you're just standing around while someone else unloads your groceries, you can be practicing Tai Chi while you're standing around. Go at your own pace. Breathe at your own rate. Make it a full stretch. Think about how you would stretch if you didn't have the tension in your body. What would the shape look like? <clears throat> Keep your hands inside your vision. And the vision leads the hands. So as you look, the hands are there. Do we change directions? If not, when you get to the top or the bottom, switch and go the other way. Make the breathing long and relaxed. Make the movement match the breathing. You can practice a type of hyper-coordination, coordinating your hand movement, your waist turn, your inhale, where you look, your exhale, coordinating all of those things to be harmonious, meaning they're arriving and departing at the same time. Creating a type of internal synchronicity. Your hands reach the top just as the lungs reach their capacity, just as your center line reaches its center point. Now check to see that you have at least a half smile. If you could attain internal harmony, that should at least create some type of half smile. And then put something else in your mind. I'm not counting these, so if you're OCD and you need to balance one side to the other, you'll have to take care of that. Put something else in your mind. Some place you like to go, some the type of people that you like to meet, the type of foods that you like to eat, the kind of experiences that you like to entertain. And so with the breathing and the movement, what is it? What is it like after that experience? What is the moment just after What is it like having that experience as a long term? What is it like later to have that experience? Going at your own pace, just do two more. When you come back to the center, allow your hands to float. The same thing, take your physical. Your arms may feel heavy even though they float like feather. Bring your feet together in the center, bring your hands together. 
Pull your head top up, calibrate one more time, connect the tongue. And then allow your eyes to close somewhat. Move your mind into your center, into your belly button, into your dantian. And internally, you can even turn your eyes looking down into your center. Take a second to smile to yourself. Internally, no one can hear the volume, so you can say thank you to yourself. You can make a song, it can be musical, it can be loud or quiet. Smiling to yourself, take a deep breath. And then move where you think your mind is up into your heart chakra. Take a long, deep breath. This is a good time to be grateful for your heart. We forget about it, it's working 24 seven. So take a second to say thank you to your heart internally, as much or as little as you like. Take another deep breath and then move your mind up into your third eye, right in the center of your forehead. And the same thing with your brain, it's also been working. The lights are on back there working all the time. Even when we're sleeping, the lungs are going, the heart is beating. So take a second. Imagine when you're breathing that you can allow your brain physically to relax and expand inside your head. And then the same thing, take a second to give thanks, have gratitude. This is a holiday weekend in the United States for Thanksgiving, so this is a gratitude practice for your brain. Take a long, deep breath. Imagine you can send the chi directly to your brain. And then one more time, put your brain into the chakra that's just above the top here. <clears throat> and take a second to look down at yourself. And looking down from above, take a second to smile at yourself. Give thanks to yourself for yourself. Take a long, deep breath. And then move your mind back into your dantian all the way back into the center. And imagine everything that we've talked about here and how you can use it to benefit your practice, benefit your life, and turn it into your own. Change the idea, make it more yours. Breathing deep, one last breath. Enjoy your weekend, call text right with questions. Thank you, Brian. Bye. Thank you.